Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend, Dustin from Convoy. How you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, man. So one of the things I love about talking to other experts, which uh, you and Jonathan are now part of the family here at One Rental at a Time, is we get to do some education as well, right? Lending is a huge space with lots of different options. And one of the things I don't think we've talked about uh, on the channel is something called a bank statement loan. So do me a favor, kind of define what it is, then we'll kind of talk about who uses those and the like. So uh, Dustin, what is a bank statement loan and why the heck do they exist? So bank statement loans are, you know, what they sound like, where the only means of qualifying in terms of income mm -hmm. would be the bank statements that somebody has either personal or business, which okay. is huge. Okay, so we can use either three months, six months or 12 months. Okay. You can use personal or business. Now the rates can be better if you provide 12 months, of course, because we get a better look at your yeah. you know, financial history over a one year period rather than three months. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you can get a loan based off of a three month period of, of bank statements mm -hmm. is pretty nice because on those seasonal type, you know, uh, clients that have a job where they're out of work for three months, whether it be construction or teaching or something like that, and they can't right. show the income, those help in those situations. So mm -hmm. typically the, the way it works is you'll send us, let's just say 12 months of bank statements. Okay. We'll go through them. We'll see how many, you know, business deposits are in there, mm -hmm. or if you're using personal, what you're going to use as personal deposits to count. Mm -hmm. We're not going to count, let's say, you know, Venmo's from friends as deposits, right? right. It's, it's only going to be if it's based off of something that you got from business. Right. And then depending on the industry that you're in, we have this thing called an expense factor. Mm. So hypothetically, let's say somebody has 10,000 a month in business deposits on their bank statements, right? Okay. We'll put an expense factor, let's say at 25%. Mm -hmm. So the income we'll use is 7,500 a month. Got it. Right? And that is the number we'll use to qualify. Now that same person, I can pretty much guarantee you that on their tax return, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <it> ain't that. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not, what is 7,500 times 90,000, right? Yeah. 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 Or yeah. 90,000. 90. Yeah. I can tell you that their, their tax returns do not show 90,000. No chance. <laughs> if, right? if you're showing 90,000 90, in this scenario to the tax man, you need a new account. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's where it helps those clients. And that's who it's really built for is, is the self-employed or the mm -hmm. clients that have a good accountant or they're an accountant themselves. And, the, yeah. and they know that there's ways yeah. in our current tax law to uh, minimize how much you show the IRS that you made. Yeah. And, and so really what, really what you're doing with the bank statements is you are essentially creating an income statement from provable and auditable bank records. That's essentially what you're doing. Is that fair? Correct. Yeah. Uh, how about, you know, so that, that makes sense. Self-employed again, a lot of you out there have been denied because you've been self-employed given what's going on in the two, last two years. I keep telling you go to these non-QM lenders. It's just so much easier. Bank statement loan makes a sense. I am curious, what happens if you happen to be a high net worth individual, don't really have provable income, or maybe it's very lumpy, but you've got cold, hard cash, maybe stocks, uh, you know, is, is, could that be considered a bank statement loan or is that something else? Excuse me. It's actually considered, I mean, it's in the same, same realm of, you know, alternative qualifying in the non-QM space, mm -hmm. but we do that differently. It's just called asset, asset that's lending. Right. Yeah. Or asset depletion. Sure. So a scenario to make numbers easy, let's say there's two different types of cash or equivalent cash we could use it would be cash in the bank account mm -hmm. or stocks now if it's stocks we can only use 75 percent of whatever you have in stocks makes okay? sense but hypothetically let's just say somebody has you know six million dollars in uh liquid cash okay what we'll do is we'll, we'll take that number and we'll divide it by either 60 or 72 and you know the more we divide it by the better the rate you're going to get. Mm -hmm. If you divide that number, 6 million divided by, you know, 60, mm -hmm. right? 100,000. Yep, exactly. We'll get that guy, uh, and then we'll give him a same sort of thing, an expense factor, 
normally like 20 or 30, but his qualifying monthly income that we can base it off of would be like 70 grand a month. Yeah, exactly. So, and then, again, there's lots of you out there that maybe you, I don't know, maybe you had a liquidity event, you're in the Silicon Valley and you're sitting out a bunch of cash and you can't go get an FHA loan or you don't want to use your cash for this. There's, there's lots of things going on. So non-QM space has a, again, I call it the make sense lending. It just makes sense. So uh, if you are sitting in a situation where you want to do something, you feel like you should get a yes answer, but banks are saying no because you don't fit the algorithm, you need to reach out to a non-QM lender, bank statement loan, asset-based, and there are others. Uh, Dustin, how do you want them to reach out? They can email us at a private client at convoy homeloans.com folks. And I will put that in line one of the, thanks buddy. I appreciate it. You got it.